the company is not dependent on one person even though that person dies the company will run that is called as perpetual succession what do you mean by revenue revenue it is nothing but repeatedly happening recurring in nature what are the expenses which are recurring in nature we call it as revenue expenditure and revenue income A warm welcome to one and all. This is your Adi Sir here, lecturing with the Ashram Fasgat College, the Temple of Excellence. And now we are discussing the topic called Income Tax to Session One and Unit Five. In this, we are discussing the topic called Assessment of Company. What do you mean by Assessment of Company? We have already completed Assessment of Individual and Assessment of Partnership Form. Assessment of individual means whatever income you earn on that you are supposed to pay tax. Assessment of partnership form. If there are partners are there, they have started a new partnership form on that whatever they are supposed to pay tax. Like whatever income they earned on that they are supposed to pay tax. That we call it as assessment of partnership form. At the end, we have assessment of company. In assessment of company, whatever the company earns profit, like whatever they have income and expenditure, whatever the P and L they have prepared, in that whatever profit they earned, on that they are supposed to pay tax. How do you calculate tax? What are the procedures are there? Which are exempted? Which are taxable? And what are the methods we are supposed to follow? Each and everything we are supposed to learn in today's session so first first we will understand what is company before we go to your problems actually before we go to your calculation part we will understand what do you mean by company now company we call it as artificial person why do we call it as artificial person like yourself you are an individual you are a living thing like Artificial person, it is nothing but we call it as non-living being or non-living thing. Like the person, the company, like we can take an example of Infosys, Wipro, LNT, all comes under artificial person, no life, but it has its identity. So if you go and pay to your college fees, whatever the college fees you paid. We will not mention the name of the chairman, name of the owner. We use the name of the college institution. Why? Because that is an artificial person or nothing but legal identity. If you go to any shop like Reliance Smart, what do you say? Will have? Will you mention that you paid to X Y Z? No. You will mention that you paid to Reliance. You paid to this particular. Company. That's why we call this as artificial person. Artificial person. It is nothing but identity, legal identity. Now, in this, these are the features we can call it as the features of company. In your examination for five marks, you may get what are the five features of company. In depth, you are not supposed to go. Why? Because if you are reading company law or auditing then you are supposed to do what is company types of company features of company everything you have to go in depth but in this your income tax we have only five mark question that will be what is the meaning of company as well as what are the features of company in this these are called as features of company what are those like Voluntary association of person like there is no force or there is no compulsion in this voluntary. If you are interested, four or five members together, you can start a new company. There are some legal documentations are there, legal procedures are there. You are supposed to follow that. If you fulfill all those documentation, you can start a new venture or company. Similarly. Incorporated association. It is nothing but it is a group of the people. As so, that is called incorporated association. There is no like the friends, partners, nothing like that. Incorporated officially, you can start a company. Formed for specific objective, like whatever the college we have. What is the objective? Education service. 
Similarly, if you go to any IT companies, what is the motive giving IT services? If you go to any other kind of company, manufacturing sector, what is their motive? The motive will be manufacturing of certain product. These are called as specific objectives. They have certain objective for that particular objective, particular specification, they will start a company. And the next one, artificial person created by law. See, as I told you, just three or four members just go and start a company that we cannot consider as company because there are so much of legal documentations are there. If you follow all those legal documentation, then we consider as artificial person created by law. Like Wipro, it is artificial person created by law. Infosys, artificial person created by law. LNT, artificial person created by law. Why it is law means there are certain document documentation and legal requirements are there. If you fulfill all those legal requirements, you will be considered as artificial person. You will be considered as legal identity. Now, it has separate legal entity. It is nothing but you are an individual, you have separate identification. Now, it has perpetual succession. What is perpetual succession? Very simple, like if there is only one person there, he is running a business. If something happened to that particular person, that business will close. But what about this company? The company is not dependent on one person. Even though that person dies, the company will run. That is called as perpetual succession. Even though there are two or three members are there, something happened to those two or three members, still the company run. Why? Because it is perpetual succession. Because it is created by what? It is created by law. Then, being artificial person, it uses device common seal. What is a common seal like? What is the identity? If you go to any shop, once you are done with your shopping, what they will do? They give you bill along with the registered number with the seal. And if you go to any shop, if you buy something, they will give you the GST number with the seal. It is nothing but they have legal identity. Everything, whatever documents comes from that particular company, they comes with seal as well as one identity. Next, it has large number of members. One person cannot start a company. As you know that we need minimum seven members for your public company. So minimum two members, minimum seven, maximum 200. All are the numbers you are supposed to remember for this maximum number of members. Like it provides free transferability of shares. Like you have purchased a shares of XYZ company. You are not interested in that. What you are supposed to do? You can transfer to somebody else. X is having this share. Next day, Y may have the same share. This is called transferability. It can be transferred from one person to another person. Next, liability of members of company limited. What do you mean by limited? Like your share capital is worth of 5 lakh. So you, can, you are liable for how much? You are liable for 5 lakh. Your share capital is for 10 lakh. You are liable for what value? You are liable for up to 10 lakh. This is called limited liability. Your personal property, your personal belongings will not be liable to the outsiders. Whatever is there in your company, whatever is there in your institution or something, that much only liable to the outsider. This we call it as your limited liability. Always remember the companies comes under limited liability. Now, these are the features you are supposed to remember any five features for your examination purpose. How many features you are supposed to remember? You are supposed to remember any five features for your exam purpose. Now, so we'll go with problem number one. Remember, 
what we get for your assessment of individual what we get for your business or profession in the previous semester the same method we will follow but the few changes are there i'll let you know what are those changes so this is your problem number one so we are solving your first problem on assessment of company following is the profit and loss account of surya company limited for the year and date 31st march 2019 compute the company's total income for the assessment year 2020 and 2021 So in the question, always they will give you the profit and loss account. The debit side we call it as all the expenses, and the credit side we call it as all the incomes. And in the P and L account, whatever we get, we call it as revenue expenditures and revenue income. What do you mean by revenue? Revenue it is nothing but repeatedly happening, recurring in nature. What are the expenses which are recurring in nature? We call it as revenue expenditure and revenue income. It is also we call it as indirect expenses, indirect income. Again, I'll repeat. It is also we call it as indirect expenses, indirect incomes. Now. whatever we have debit side those are expenses whatever we have on the credit side those are incomes in this the debit side what we are supposed to do is which are related to business which are related to business we are not supposed to consider we have few items are there which are called as disallowed item we have few items are there which are called as disallowed item what do you mean by disallowed item very simple what about tax paid disallowed item any reserves are there disallowed item any provisions are there disallowed item along with that depreciation remember if you want to write down you can write down also any provisions any reserves any taxes paid any personal expenses made any depreciation made all comes under this allowed item again i'll repeat all the reserves all the provisions all the personal expenses depreciation and along with that if you have anything like underwriting commission underwriting commission remember up to 80% disallowed the remaining 20% will be allowed remember this every problem you will get this statement under writing commission up to 80% we call it as disallowed uh, remaining 20% we call it as allowed item now what is under writing commission very simple like you have started your new business you have around 1 lakh worth rupees of shares you have started your new business you have 1 lakh worth rupees of shares so normally what happens if it is a newly started business no one is interested to buy your shares then what happens he has to appoint somebody who will sell your share on behalf of you again i'll repeat you have started new company how many shares you have 1 lakh worth rupees of shares you have you want to sell those shares but no one is interested why because yours is a newly started company then what happens you have to appoint somebody who is expert in that who will sell who will sell your shares on behalf of you for that person what you are supposed to give you have to give him commission that commission we call it as underwriting commission hope you got it yes that particular commission we call it as underwriting how much is disallowed 80% is disallowed and balance 20% is allowed if you get this question underwriting commission you take 80% whatever amount mentioned in the question paper income tax paid wealth tax paid depreciation including fire insurance premium all are called as your disallowed item right on the list your any taxes other than your business related like gst what other than these two any taxes any reserves any provisions income tax personal expenses depreciation 
and your fire insurance premium 80% of underwriting commission. These are the things we consider as disallowed item. Now, which are other head income which you will get it on credit side of your question paper. Credit said, what are the ex incomes are there? If it is not related to your business, you are supposed to minus. Which are those like gross profit part of your question, premium on issue of shares. So premium on issue of shares, it is not regular in nature. That is also you are supposed to consider. Similarly, interest on security. Interest on security already we have completed. This topic will come under income from other source. So it will come under what? Income from other source. Similarly, commission. Commission is what? Part of your business. Without commission, you cannot run your, you cannot sell your product. Similarly, refund of IT. So these are the allowed item. RLs, we can call it as other head items we are supposed to consider. Now I'll go to your answer. I'll show you how to do this calculation. So these are the information we have. Depreciation form to be excess 5,000. The company paid advance of rupees 10,000. Fire insurance premium include 10,000. Insurance premium paid in respect of residential house. These are the, see, fire insurance premium, why we have to take means that belongs to your house. Residential house, we are doing only what? Business related. Other than business related, we don't want. Now, see your answer. Computation of business income for the assessment year 2020 and 2021. In this, what happens? Net profit as per profit and loss account, 1,83,000. Yes. Add disallowed item, which are those income tax reserve? Yes. Underwriting commission on shares? Yes. How much? 80% of your value. As I told you, underwriting commission only 80% is disallowed. Income tax paid? Yes. Wealth tax? Yes. Depreciation? Yes. Fire insurance, we take only 10,000 because overall insurance, 10,000 worth belongs to personal residential property. Now, all this, where do you get in the question? You will get it in the debit side. Now, after this, less allowable expenses and other head source, which are those like your in premium on issue of shares, 55,000. It is not your business related. Interest on security, income from other source. Refund of income tax, 1,000. See, everything, where do you get? On the credit side of your question. See, Premium, interest on security, refund. Commission we will not take because that is a part of your business. So similarly, we have taken 65,000, 3,20,000 like 1,83 plus 137, 3,20,000. Minus 65, you will get 2,55,000. Then after this, once you're done with the calculation, what is your total income? Simple. Income from salary in this problem nil. Income from house property in this problem nil. Income from business or profession, you got 2,55,000. You are supposed to consider like your final answer. 2,55,000, your final answer. Then income from capital gain nil. Income from other source like 9,000 you have. What is the total? 2,64. What is income from other source? Whatever interest you collected, that is only income from other source. 2,64, there is no deduction, nothing. Your total income is 2,64,000. Hope you are clear. We did one basic problem today. From tomorrow, we'll go with your examination problem. Basic problem in the sense, almost 80% whatever required for your examination, it is there in this problem. But still, there are, you will get more adjustment. We'll work out those adjustments in the next session. I'll go back to all your previous slides so that you can take a screenshot. So what do you mean by company? Features of company. Features. Problem number one. Yes. Problem one. Your solution part. Solution part. Solution part. 
So this is all about your today's session. Hope you got it. Yes, please work out at your home so that you will understand better. In the next session, we'll go with minimum two problems on this particular topic. Thank you.